Hello everyone. I am Dr. Muhammad Tawab Khalil from Pakistan and today we have one of our very respected keynote lecturer Professor Walter Frontera. He is a man who needs no introduction. He is a well-renowned figure in PMNR throughout the world and in the upcoming conference in Cartagena from 4th to 8th June in 2023 he will be dis- delivering a keynote lecture on healthy longevity a global challenge for rehabilitation on 5th of june from 8:30 to 9:30 am in cartagena and welcome professor fontera how are you doing today thank you very much for the invitation i am doing quite well and i hope you too you too yeah i'm doing great as well so this year we are going to gather in cartagena for our isprm 2023 world congress and as you know that cartagena is such a beautiful city which is full of a vibrant history and delicious food so what is in your to do list for cartagena when you land there well cartagena is a beautiful city colombia is a beautiful country i was there the last time um, perhaps 10 years ago for the national uh, colombian um, society um, meeting and it was fantastic I-, i think all of us should take an opportunity to visit the old city uh with the spanish architecture which is typical of this area similar to some degree to san juan puerto rico i think the food is fantastic and of course the local music so we're going to be busy with the congress but there there is a lot of good things to do in cartagena yeah obviously we are going to take out some time to visit this beautiful city as well so professor frontera Uh, healthy longevity is no doubt a global challenge at this moment and the terms healthy aging and healthy longevity they are being used quite commonly nowadays so what is healthy longevity and is it actually synonymous with the word healthy aging or is it different <clears throat> yeah that's a good question and to some degree it's a matter of semantics uh, some people may argue that that the two terms actually refer to the same thing <clears throat> I think that those who are making the distinction uh emphasize on basic definitions of the two terms. Aging <clears throat> is considered as a process um biologic to some degree uh that is associated with a decline in functioning, a decline in physiological capacities. and functioning longevity on the other hand is is being defined as the the length of the lifespan is life expectancy to some degree so i think the distinction that that some people are trying to make is that we shouldn't focus on the on aging itself on the process itself but rather on the um human experience of living longer and that we, what we should do is make sure that we extend that longevity in a way that people enjoy life so i i'm quite sure that the distinction between the two terms uh, will continue to be a matter of discussion <clears throat> but i think that those are the basic uh, ideas <clears throat> can you kindly give us a brief overview of your keynote lecture on healthy longevity that is a global challenge for rehabilitation which is scheduled for 5th of June 2023 in Cartagena this year. Of course. Uh, the main idea of the lecture will be to discuss what is happening around the world in terms of uh, aging of the population. Uh the numbers are are uh, quite uh, convincing. <clears throat> These are demographic statistics published by the WHO and other entities. uh showing very clearly that we're aging as a, as individuals but also as a society now the issue is that with age with advanced adult age we lose functional capacity that's why this is an important topic in in rehabilitation and we will focus on the idea that that loss um losing functional capacity is connected to a phenomenon that is being studied quite uh, intensely in the last 20 years which is uh, sarcopenia the loss of muscle mass strength and, and performance so we will talk about that including some of the most recent basic scientific studies 
looking at the underlying mechanisms that explain sarcopenia. Uh, how is sarcopenia being diagnosed? Uh, the uh, def current definitions and diagnostic approaches. And finally, some thoughts about what to do about it. Uh, in rehabilitation, what can we do to address this, this important uh, problem? Depending on the um, definition and, and diagnostic approaches uh, and the population, it's been estimated that perhaps between 10 and 30 percent uh, of the population of the older adults may have sarcopenia. Uh, the, the percentage is higher, prevalence is higher in rehab settings, uh, rehabilitation hospitals and so on lower in the community, but still quite significant. So we're going to try to address this issue uh, in a comprehensive way and hopefully stimulate our colleagues in, in BRM to, to think about this and to um, use this knowledge in their uh, clinical practice. Yeah, this brings uh, me to my final question that as physiatrists, so what should we do in our clinical practice to promote healthy longevity? Yeah, well, th this is an important issue. Um, I, I think there's a lot of things we can do. One of them, of course, is to make sure we understand this condition, that we study the condition uh, in detail, um, make sure that, that we educate ourselves and others and the importance of this. It is quite clear to me that in the future, it is already the case, but I think in the future it will be more evident that rehabilitation professionals will have to deal with an older uh, population. And so we need to be prepared for that. And sarcopenia will be one of those important challenges. Not the only one, but it will be one of those important challenges. We also need to be part of the research efforts. Uh, to understand sarcopenia and to um, implement rehabilitation uh, interventions. So hopefully some of the people in the Congress will be uh, will become interested in, in conducting research in this area. Now, from a um, practical clinical point of view, there are certain things that we should be recommending to our uh, patients and, and our population. Um, clearly, um, <clears throat> people need to have a healthy diet um, and it's usually very difficult to say exactly what that means, but uh, there, there is some good research about this. Um, physical activity, which is core in our specialty uh, or intervention, uh, has to be part of the, in, uh, of the plan. And we focus on strengthening exercises because those uh, have been shown to influence muscle mass, muscle strength and performance directly. Uh, of course, it is not only strengthening, we need to promote other types of exercise for other reasons. Uh, you know, cardiovascular exercises, so-called aerobic endurance exercise has a lot of benefits. It's not really the most important intervention for sarcopenia, but it is clearly important in this uh, older uh, population. Another important aspect that we can uh, promote uh, <clears throat> is the, uh, the need to have a, a social network. We need to be connected uh, with other people in, in society. It's been shown that um, populations that have a long life expectancy have a very close um, community of individuals that support each other. So there is that element of social networking and also mental health. So there's a lot of things that contribute to healthy longevity, going back to the discussion about this. And uh, even though we focus on exercise for sarcopenia, it is not the only thing that we need to focus on. Um, so those are some of the things that we, we will consider. Uh, there's research that is being conducted uh, um, looking at other interventions that that uh, may be beneficial for this population. At this point in time, those interventions are probably uh, should be considered more experimental than anything else. Um, and we will talk about those uh, briefly. Um, 
they, they may offer some opportunity to intervene with the aging process in some tissues and cell types and so on. That's probably a, a difficult, a, a different discussion and clearly uh, not something that we, we will do on a daily basis in the clinic at this point in time, but maybe in the future. So those are some of the things that I think we should, uh, as PRM physicians, as rehab professionals, should, should be um, part of. Thank you so much, Professor Frontera, for your insight. And we all are very excited for your keynote lecture. And it would be wonderful to learn sarcopenia from you. And I request all our viewers to see the program of ISPRM, which is available on their website. And if you have not registered for the conference yet, then please do it because the early bid registration is going to end on 31st of April. So once again, thank you so much, Professor Frontera, for taking up time for us and best of luck for your keynote lecture. Thank, thank you, so you much. very much for the invitation to be here today, uh, speaking to you and others. And I certainly hope that uh, those who will be listening to this uh, uh, message will be attending the Congress in Cartagena. Look forward to seeing uh, many of you at the uh, keynote lecture and, and some of the other scientific and social events. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.